As a boy, I was never into science or math. As a matter of fact, I was hardly ever in school. I was always going somewhere new, trying to find some place that I'd never been. That's probably what earned me the nickname Scout. Both my parents worked two jobs, so they never really knew I was out. It didn't help the fact that I've spent everything that they gave me. It's not that they didn't care. I didn't really know it then, but that adventurous spirit, that yearning to find new places, would eventually change my life, the world, and finally earned me that nickname. My future began near the end of my junior year of high school. My U.S. history teacher assigned us all summer projects. My topic was NASA. <laughs> Once summer began, I put the project off, but I quickly realized that I should at least start the project so I didn't spend all summer worrying about it. I decided to call up my grandfather, who lived during the space race, and set up a quick interview. I set the camera up and I asked, How did NASA change the world? I remember watching the launches on TV and thinking, it's just amazing we're up there. I remember watching Walter Cronkite's television programs about all those events. Something about those events changed the way America viewed the world. Something about those events ignited a flame in the eyes of the people. Passion, the spirit of advancement and knowledge and, and exploration. The most awe-inspiring moment of my life aside from holding you in my arms, was watching the lunar lander touch down. The moment the lander touched down, the moment Armstrong put his boot in the dust, the moment... Sorry, I get a little weepy when I think about it. When the first pictures came in from the moon, it was the most powerful day of my life. Seeing the Earth as this blue dot in this infinite darkness made us all feel small. We all talked about the way the moon landing shaped our lives. During that interview, something in me clicked. The next day to celebrate. I had this urge to do more research on the missions my grandfather was describing. I visited the library, actually for the first time. What I saw gave me goosebumps. It was real life science fiction. I watched as the Mercury missions sent the men into space. The bringing together of two great enemies during a time of war. One of my favorites was the launch of the space shuttle. All that thunder and liftoff. The docking with the ISS. It was an amazing craft. I think the most spectacular thing I saw was the footage of the Apollo 11 moon landing. I watched as the anchors talked about the Eagle. That's what they called the lander. And Neil declaring, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Oh, boy. Well, that was a moment I will never forget. After watching all this, images from the Hubble popped up. They were stunning, to say the least, which inspired me to visit the local astronomy club. Can I help you? Yeah, is this the astronomy club? Sure is. What can I do for you, son? Well, I guess I just wanted to see what this was about. I'm doing a research video over NASA and thought this might help. Well, come on in. I'll show you the universe. Whoa. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Can I look through it? Go right ahead. You look right through there. I've got it set for the Orion Nebula. That's over 1,344 light years away from here. It's beautiful. I can't even see it in the sky. Does it really look like that? Yep, prettier too. The rods in your eyes limit the perception of color, so you only see black and white. But open up a camera and a whole new world appears. From that moment, Gideon and I became close friends. He was like a father to me. 
We spent every Saturday studying the stars and looking into space. I want to go to space, but I think it's too much of a dream. I should focus on things I can actually do. Well, with an attitude like that, you're right. You shouldn't think like that. You're one of the brightest young men that I know. If you want to do it, do it. If you try hard enough and you set your mind on it, you can do anything. I believe you'll accomplish that dream. I guess. I want to take you someplace when you're done with your presentation. Where to? To a place that inspired me to journey on the path that I did. I think you'll like it. That weekend, Gideon took me to this museum. This very museum where I gazed upon things I thought I would never see. Ad Astra per Aspera. That's Latin for to the stars through difficulties. Come on, let's go. In the hall of space, I gazed upon things that broadened our universe and landed us on other worlds. The history of the future, our proudest achievements. And it was here that I realized my destiny was not on Earth, but in the cosmos above. I graduated high school and attended college, studying as much as I could. Every evening, I trained my body to become an astronaut. And four years later, I was accepted into the program and designated as the first human to walk on Mars. I trained with my crew in near weightlessness. And in 2033, we set sail on the journey to Mars. step, the universe became real. Everything we thought impossible was possible. We united as one, a brotherhood of man venturing into the frontier for the pursuit of knowledge and discovery. War wasn't against each other, it was against the daunting tasks we never thought we could accomplish. Now you are the pioneers. You are the next generation of explorers, creators, Armstrongs. You are the future of the human race. You, you are the ones whose destinies lie in the stars.